All right, we're back with another episode of the Kids Road to Nirvana. I'm joined by our December intern crew. Say hello, everybody. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I need to figure out a way to get everyone to speak in unison. And Sonia was that. Whose high was that? It was Thiasha. Sonia's there in the background as well. So I'm going to be showing you today um, quickly how to build um, an inset map and uh, make it like a sort of a globe effect on the inset map. Yeah, I'm sorry. Somebody was knocking on my door. No, no problem. Constantly, so now I'm back. <laughs> No problem. I, I am recording now, so just maybe uh, you keep keep it on mute when we when you're not talking. That's great. In case somebody else knocks. So what what we're doing is we're going to be showing um, the concept of themes in QGIS and how to make an overview map. To set up my project, I've just typed world in the in the bottom of the coordinate box here to get the little Easter egg. You type world and you press enter. Let me just do it again from scratch like this. So. Um, world and press enter and then you get a, a nice world map on your project and I'm going to start off by just saving my work as I begin so um, I'm just going to go here and say um, inset map demo something like that okay and uh, I'm going to call my project the same thing inset it is best practice from my point of view to name your project after your project folder just because when we want to publish it online, which we'll show you at some point, um, it uses this convention of having the name of the project should match the name of the folder to know how to publish or what to publish. Okay, so I've saved that. Now this map, if we look at it, you'll see that it's actually lying on my hard drive somewhere in my um, QGIS directory. I actually want to just save a copy into that same folder, so I'm just going to export this and just say um, save this as a geo package, and I'm going to put it in that same project folder. So um, inset map demo, and I'm just going to call this world something like that. Okay, um, and then. Uh, I'm going to copy the style across from the original one. It's got a nicer style, so I'm just going to go copy the style and apply the style to the one that I've copied. When when you add a new layer to QGIS, if it doesn't have a like an associated style, it will just give it a random color. Um, so I want to just override that random color. Okay, so and then I save my project again. So this file that now, if you look on the tooltip, you see it's actually stored in that same folder where I stored my project in that sync thing, QGIS projects inset map demo. Okay. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, a theme. Uh, and a theme is just basically a way, like, I don't know if you ever used like themes in your browser or on your desktop. You can just toggle on different styles and off different styles based on your theme settings. So I'm going to create a new theme and I do that on this little eye icon over here. And I'm going to say add theme here. I'm going to call, call this inset map and then you'll see if you go in the eye icon again I've got now a theme here called inset map and then I'm going to go and make some changes to this by like adding st another style so I'm going to create a style here called an inset called inset map inset map so this style is like um, it's like a theme but at the layer level so um, you can see I've got the default theme and uh, the default map style and this inset map style here. So this default one I'm going to switch back to here and just going to call uh, rename it. So you can rename any style. I'm going to call this world map, something like that. So now I've got these two styles. At the moment they're the same, this one and this one, and I switch between them. But if I go here, uh, to the, uh, so I'm on the inset map one now. I'm going to just kind of make it a bit gray. So the way that we can do that is we just go to the layer styling here. If you want to get that layer styling visible here, you can just click on this little paintbrush icon. And then um, I can go here and change colors as I want to. For example, just um, maybe sliding this around, making it gray. Um, I can also choose from my style gallery here, so I can pick from something that I've already made, like this. Um, 
Um, maybe those are all very ugly, so I can just undo my way back. To that grey one that I had here. So this would be the um, the style for um, the inset map. We can have like a grey map. And then for the world map, I'm going to switch back to that one. You can see it, it's remembered my brown style. So um, the theme of the, the, the layer can be, you can have as many themes as you want for the layer and just switch between them. And then the theme of, this, of the whole project, you can say, well, my inset map uh, will be one theme and my overview map will be another. So I'm going to go here and just... Uh, Set this to inset map first and say replace the current theme inset map so that whenever I choose my inset map theme, it will set this layer style to the inset map style. It probably will make some more sense when we add some more layers. So let's just add another one here, contributors. Okay, and I'm going to go and just change the style to just some simple dots like that. Okay, now this one. I um, I can also create multiple themes, or I could just turn it on and off. So, for, for example, in the in the inset map theme, which is the one that's, uh, well, which we're going to replace now, I don't want to see those dots. I want to just have the world map like this. So I turn it off there, and I go to the map, and I say replace the inset map theme. Okay. So now the theme remembers that this layer is off, and this layer has been drawn with the gray style. And then I go to, um, uh, let's turn this back on again and set this to the brown style, the world map style. Okay, so this is the other theme that I'm going to create. I'm going to say add theme here. We'll call this world map. Okay, so now I can just switch between the two. So I can go to my inset map theme, it turns off that layer, it puts that one into gray. I go to my world map theme, it enables that layer and it puts that in the brown background. Did you all follow me? Any questions so yes. far? No, sir. No questions. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay. Uh, every time I like incrementally improve my work, I'm going to save my project. So I, I'm usually just pressing Control S on the keyboard, but just to show you, like, I am as I work, I just save all the time. Sometimes Q just crashes. At least then you can restore to the last place that you were, uh, that you saved if you get a crash. Okay. Now this map is in uh, which coordinate reference system? Mm, VGS 84. Yeah, it's in, in this uh, four, 4326, which is a geographic coordinate reference system using the WGS 84 spheroid. Okay, and this is not a good map to uh, a coordinate reference system to use for um, maps like this because it, it distorts the map. Actually, the world countries are not the relative sizes that they they're shown on this map. Um, if we're working at the world level, we could find a world projection, like um, if you just type world in here, you'll find a bunch of different options here, and if you apply them, you get to see how the map perhaps gets changed. Um, you'll see that the, the proportions of the countries to each other change. Now you see, for example, um, uh, the Antarctica is much bigger than it was before and America has become smaller and you know the proportional sizes of things change. Uh, we can play around with the different ones to see how it affects things. You see now the <laughs> it's almost like you can imagine let's put it in, in a big ellipse shaped um, area and Russia is now much bigger and um, so on. So you want to find a coordinate reference system which is suited for using at the world level uh, and um, sometimes that's just a matter of taste like for example that one is not going to be so useful because you can't make out the countries um, so that one is kind of useful if <laughs> if you um, want to see it in a sort of a quasi sphere but it it's kind of looks a bit distorted you'd have to go set some some settings to get it back uh, with the north up um, look to it. 
So it's really good to just go and explore these coordinate reference systems and see how each one affects how the map is drawn. Um, there is a beautiful one which is like shaped like a butterfly. I'm trying to remember its name. Um, let's see. Um, let me find the name of it quickly. Um, butterfly coordinate. Put GIS in there as well, maybe. Um, um, ah, why is it not coming up? Yeah, this one here. Um, so let's see what it's called. A waterman, waterman butterfly. So let's go see if we've got that here. Waterman. Oh, it's not available. And we can maybe go and search for them. I'm going on a little tangent now, but we can go and see if we can find the, the coordinate reference system definition of that. Um, there is a website, I think it's called mapprojections.org, something like that. Um, This kind of stuff that I'm doing now is useful for just like you getting a sense of um, your profession, like what uh, different coordinate systems exist and when they can be useful. I think that's maybe the one there. Let's see if they have... Um, um, the definition. So what we're looking for is to find the... Um, the definition for it is a what's called a proj4 string or a wkt string, a well-known text string. Um, I'm just going to add, so I'm just going to go here, waterman butterfly um, proj4, not proj5, where are we now, proj5. Um, Okay, I think I've gone on too much of a tangent and it's not there. Maybe it's still available as a Proj4 string. I'm sorry, Tim. Uh, Tiasha posted a question in chat. Oh. Her, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. You found it? Yes. Let's have a look. Um, uh, so, Tiasha, your question, if you're doing a specific country, you would, would you change it to your country? Yes, absolutely. So, if, um, if I'm working in South Africa, you could look for South Africa. Um, uh, let's just um, RSA, maybe it's got here. Um, we actually, Gavin and I, published some in uh, QGIS, which I think might have been removed. But basically, in South Africa, we use uh, typically we'd use one of the UTM, uh, like 34, 30, 34 South, for example. Um, and you'd find like like this one here. You'll see in the projection preview, you'll see that if you want to do South Africa and you're in the Western Cape, you might use the 34 South. Otherwise, I think it goes 35 South here. Then, you, then it will put you sort of over where you are, Thiasha. Or if you wanted to do something um, uh, like more across the whole of South Africa, we use this Lambert Conic Conformal one here. Um, uh, I don't find the right one, uh, Lambert Conic Conformal. That's Africa wide one if you were doing the whole African continent. So, really, again, it's like as part of your journey into GIS, you should come and explore coordinate reference systems and just understand which ones are used in different um, geographic contexts, like what the national one is. So if you go search for South African National Coordinate Reference System, you'll find a whole bunch of information about what should be used there. Um, uh, yeah, let's maybe make an Africa map 
that might be quite nice. And then uh, we'll have the world map as the um, uh, as the insert map. And then um, let's go back to here. Where was the Africa one? Um, Africa land. So we'll take that one there, and we'll use that for our. Um, map projection. Now, it looks a bit weird when I do this because the map projection is designed to show Africa well, and the rest of the um, of the countries are outside of the like projected area. They're not like in the um, in the coordinate reference space that's defined by the projection. So, Africa with the um, Lambert conic conformal a conical projection is um, I might have a Lambert Conic, uh, you'll see that there is a little picture like this here. So what what they do is imagine you've taken a, a lampshade over um, Africa in this case, and you project the outline of the countries onto the lampshade, and then you roll it out, um, and you and you'll get basically the proportions like working well in South Africa, and being a conformal coordinate reference system, it means that um, the I think it means that the angles um, and the relative sizes of things to each other are conformal, so that they, like um, one country, is not disproportionately bigger to the other one in the way that it's displayed. Okay, um, for the world map, um, we might use a different coordinate reference system to the Africa map. So we'll we'll sort that out in, in the actual um, layout that we make. Okay, so I've chosen my coordinate reference system. You'll see this number here, 102024. That is called the EPSG code for, um, for that coordinate reference system. It's like a quick reference way to, to talk about that um, country's or, or a region's coordinate reference system. And there's actually a website called epsg.org, I think it is. And EPSG stands for the Europe, European Petroleum Standards Group. And they basically are a central place that defines um, all these coordinate reference systems. So um, if you go here and you, and you type in that number, which I've already forgotten, 102024, 102024, um, you'll get a match there. And then did we get a match? Now, it does actually say um, ESRI in front here, not EPSG, so I sort of misspoke a little bit because this one has been defined by ESRI, so then we need to go and search again. Instead of on their site, you have to say ESRI 102024024. And then uh, we'll find, okay, on the spatialreference.org site, which is actually the site I was looking for just now for the butterfly one, you'll find an entry for that, and you'll find like different. Um, the information of that coordinate reference system in different formats. In this case, it's giving the name, so it tells you Africa, Lambert con 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 uh, Conformal Conic. It tells you the spheroid that is being used, that's that WGS84. See the, Sonia, the, the WGS84 doesn't define the, the projection, just the spheroid that's being used. Um, which is the, I've got some learning materials if you want to understand the differences between those things. Um, uh, and and was the datum and the spheroid here you can see, um, and then it's got some uh, information here about false northing and uh, false easting and northing, um, and where the central meridian is. So if you if you go back to that like um, lampshade sort of analogy, they center the lampshade over Africa when they do this, and these coordinates specify like how it gets centered. If you go and take this and create your own custom version of this and change these numbers, you could shift the coordinate reference system center to be on a different area if you wanted to. So I just wanted to just explain that these websites exist, the, sp the spatial reference systems at all the EPSG site. They've got all the definitions of all these different coordinate reference systems. And then there's some software inside of QGIS. Um, the software is called PROJ, which does coordinate reference system projections. And it will take, like if the data, this data is stored in geographic coordinate reference system, um, then it needs to be converted on the fly into that other one. And this like set of um, parameters 
defines how the conversion happens. Okay. That's just a bit more technical detail in the background. Okay. So we've got our themes. Hopefully you all grasp the themes. We've got the inset map theme. We've got the world map theme. We've set the coordinate reference system. I'm going to jump over to making a map now, a layout. Um, so uh, when we do a layout, we can just get a blank page like this. And if I drag and uh, drag a map element onto the page like this, I'm just going to use the full page. It will add it in. And you'll see in the properties here, there's some options including what coordinate reference system to use. And we've told it to use the project coordinate reference system. We can actually go in inside the map here and interactively like zoom it a bit and pan it. But maybe we want to just um, have it, um, uh, let's see, so we make that, um, let's these numbers here to zoom out a bit. Uh, maybe that one. Maybe that one. Let's see. Okay, we can see like we basically just sort of fine tuning the, the zoom level a bit. Okay, and then I'll maybe just pan it a little bit more like that. I'm just trying to get Africa sort of nicely filled into the map here. Yeah. Maybe we shift it over a little bit this way as well. Okay, so that zoom level has been fixed. It's nicely showing Africa. We've used coordinate reference system, which is suitable for the the map that we're displaying. We've told it to use the project coordinate reference system. And you'll see that there's some options here about the theme. So it's not checked by default, which means it will just basically follow whatever's on the display in your main uh, in your main QGIS window. It will just use whatever there. So if I if I switch the theme here to the inset map theme and go back here and just like refresh the map, you see it just follows that it's taken the dots away and it's drawn it in grey. Um, so we don't want it to just follow whatever's happening in here. We want it to actually always use this theme, the, the world map theme. It's actually now an Africa map theme. Um, so if I again, if I refresh now, you'll see it just updates. So I can tick this box here and say, there's my list of themes. I can say, follow the world map theme. Okay. And then even if I go back to here and change this theme, Okay, drawing it in grey here, but if I come back to the map and I refresh, it still draws it with the dots and uh, brown because it's following that theme now. Is that part clear for everyone? Clearly. Cool. Yash and uh, Lesejo, are you also clear? It is very clear. Okay, perfect. Clear. Yash, uh, you can't speak, but you can type, so just pop a note if something's not, <laughs> not clear for you. Okay, so now I want to put another map onto the canvas and I want this map to use a different coordinate reference system. Uh, and maybe I want to use one that actually like um, presents the world as a, as a bit more of a sphere. So I'm going to first of all start just by dragging a box in here. I'll make it fairly big so we can see what's going on. Um, and now I'm looking at the properties for this map rather than this map on this side here. When I switch to here, you see that one switches to world map. This one switches to none. So I want to follow a theme for this one. I want to use the inset map theme. That means that even if I go back to here now and I change this to the world map theme, when I'm in here and I refresh this, it will always draw it in gray because I've chosen that specific theme. Again, I'm just going to save my work as I go. Sometimes you get a crash or something. So now, I'm going to st say instead of using the project theme, I actually want to go and pick a world theme, but I want to, uh, uh, sorry, world coordinate reference system, but I want to choose one which like shows the world as a globe rather than just as a flat map. So uh, there are some coordinate reference systems called azimuth, or it's a bit of a mouthful, but azimuth means like uh, taken from, I think it means taken from above. Um, uh, so there's the North and South Pole one. So we could take the South Pole one, for example. It doesn't really matter because Africa is like across the equator. It doesn't matter too much which one we choose. Um, or we could even take, uh, let's take that one. I think, yeah. And then you can see that it's kind of like um, created like a bit of a sphere effect there. Um, um, and you can see Africa is sort of like in the middle of there. 
Or we might want to just, uh, maybe that's actually, let me just see. I just want to just, again, I want to just experiment a bit with a few different options and just see. Um, this one looks interesting, the sphere as a equ equidistant. All right. And um, I'm just going to like, resize that a bit and zoom this out a little bit like that. Um, maybe I want to be a bit more zoomed in, so I'm just going to again, just go and hand tweak these. Uh, I'm going to go smaller, so just change that to incrementally smaller numbers here. You can do it by zooming in and out with your mouse, but I just find it more accurate to actually just change the number, and it's more precise. Okay, let's say that's going to be our um, uh, sort of view of the globe. Now, um, this is not exactly what I wanted because it's actually showing the whole globe on a circle. Because um, I can see there's the US, United States, Africa, and then all the way around through China. And um, so I'm just going to look and see. Uh, I'm going to just play a little bit more to find uh, which other options we've got here. Um, so what I what I would usually do I think is to take this um, one of these um, the north or south ones. Uh, let's just do. I'm just going to play again a bit, um, but but actually to go and tweak these and change the definition of them to say that they should like center over the middle of Africa. So I think I'll take the. Um, South Pole as a little equidistant. So if I look at this one over here and I look at this piece at the bottom here, you'll see that it's going to have somewhere, it's easier to see this part here, it's going to have somewhere where it says the, um, the latitude and the longitude. So the latitude is set for negative 90 um, and the longitude is set for zero which is just like on the Greenwich Meridian but we could actually take this thing and go and make a custom coordinate reference system based on this so I'm going to just as a little R&D excursion go and try to do that so if I go back to Q just here and I go to settings um, you'll see there's a custom projections option here now just to set myself up I'm going to first um, just make um, a paste of that and I'm going to go in my map here and I'm going to just right click somewhere here and just get the coordinate reference uh, the coordinates in WGS84 like that and just put that in my clipboard as well so that's um, that's the latitude and that's the longitude yeah, so, um, I'm doing that so that when I am in the editor here I can have those numbers easily available without having to close it again. So I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call this one like um, Africa Globe or something like that. Um, and we're going to put it in as a proj string. It says not recommended but we can still do it. Um, it will actually convert it to the WKT for us. So there I'm going to put in now uh, my latitude is going to be um, 21. I'll just copy that rather. Uh, this one here. Uh, did I get it the wrong way around? I think my latitude was the other one, was 0 0.19. And then my longitude was going to be that. And then we can just validate it to see if it's valid. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to say, okay. okay. There's a previous one. I don't know. It's a little bit buggy, this thing. Yeah. So that's my new one that I've just made, Africa Globe. I'm just going to put my name in here so we can sort of recognize it when we see it um, in the list. So as an experiment, we can just quickly switch to that one over here. If I type Tim. Uh, you'll see there's my user-defined coordinate reference system. I can choose that one. It sort of shows 
the area that it's working on. And I can say, okay, and you can see that it's sort of like um, focused in on Africa now rather than before it was, you know, like looking more from the South Pole up. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna, I can go put this one back to what it was before, if I can remember it. Luckily, uh, QGIS will uh, give us a list of the recently used ones, so I can go back and pick that one there. Um, those little drawing artifacts are because these lines cross the date line and QGIS has got some like issues sometimes when a line, basically it's trying to, it's supposed to draw like that, but the line like, continues on the one side of the date line and then to the other, it needs to get wrapped around. So it sort of draws a big long line back to the other side. Um, it's just something that needs to get fixed in QGIS one day. But um, Okay, so I'm going to save my project again. I've created a custom coordinate reference system. Uh, in this inset map now, I can go and choose my TIM coordinate reference system. So let's see if it's listed here. No. Let's pick it from here. So it goes into a special section here called user-defined coordinate reference systems. There's my globe one. I just gave it this like um, arbitrary number, but you see it says user in front, so I know it's like my own made up one. Okay, so you can see it's sort of focused in on Africa now. It still didn't entirely do what I wanted it to do, which was to sort of hide the countries which are on the other side of the globe from Africa. But for now, I'll just go with that and I'll go and look at what the correct coordinate reference system is in a minute to fix that. So now I want to just sort of create the effect of a globe, even though it's actually not properly a globe. So I'm going to go to the drawing tools here and just get an ellipse. Now, the easiest way to get it perfectly circled is just it, um, to snap to the corners of this box to start. Um, I'm going to set the the fill of this um, uh, to be just um, kind of an empty fill. So let's go here and uh, set that to no brush, just so that you can see the outline. And I'm just going to tweak this, this so that it lands up like hugging the outside of the globe. Um, uh, I definitely need to change the coordinate reference system one more time because it does look a bit weird, but we'll come to that now. Um, uh, maybe just shift it with the, the mouse a little like this. And then I can add some effects to this. Um, I like to just put a bit of a shadow into it like this. So um, go to the rendering option over here. Let me say, um, uh, no, it's not in that one over here. Let's go and quickly look. Um, okay, it's over here. So you go to the symbol fill and then draw effects. You click on this little star. And I can put in a, a, a drop shadow that will go on the outside of it. I can also put an inner, sh inner shadow that will go on the inside of it. And maybe the drop shadow and the inner shadow together doesn't make so much sense. But if I go like this and then um, kind of uh, try to darken that up a bit, let's see. Um, um, I just need to check that that is a above, I think it is the above the thing, yeah, so um, we can just tweak these options here, let's just see, it's already dark, let's make it, I got a feeling it's like getting, um, So there we get the full shadow. So what if we put this one um, behind this one here and just see, we move this one to the front. Okay, and then I'll set the, the background of this one to transparent. Okay, and then we should be able to sort of ease that into there. 
my shadow went a bit crazy, so I'm going to go and uh, tweak it now. Um, let's go back to this circle layer. style, choose that sub layer there, click on the star, make sure that that one's selected there, and then I'm going to just reduce this down a bit now, something a bit more subtle like that. Okay, one more thing before I go off and uh, find the, um, the right coordinate reference system to use is that I want to actually put a little red box over here to show where this map is on this map. So I'm going to just say that work again here. So on the properties of um, this map here, you'll see that there is an option to say uh, to, for overviews here, and I can um, actually set that as an overview, um, pointing it to map one, which is that one over there. And you can see now it's added this red piece here, which is the piece of the map that is displayed on the main map. And then you can style this frame any way you want to. So I could just use all the normal cues of styling things to say, for example, draw it with a solid line and maybe don't fill it. Um, and I could change the line color to um, something different like that. You can just style it however you want, just all using all the normal um, cute styling options. All right. Um, that already creates a bit of an effect of a globe. You can see there's some sort of messy things. If I, if I just pull this a little bit away so that you can see, this is, this is actually part of the map. Yeah, so my circle actually needs to go bigger like this. Oh, God, I'm leaving the map, sorry. Um, um, it is a bit tricky because this circle is underneath the other one, so you've got to move it away every time. But um, um, and then sort of try to move them on top of each other. So you just got to fill around it. Basically, all those little bits of islands and things need to be inside the map, and it also should not be too squashed looking. Okay. But it, it still looks weird because um, I don't have the right coordinate reference system. So. I'm going to go and um, just look. I have a, a thing called a gist or a gist, um, uh, which has got some example of where I used a different coordinate reference system. Uh, I'm just going to look at my own ones here. So um, if I if I go to my slash Tim Linux, but like it's kind of like a web clipboard. This thing, yeah. So. Um, you can see all the history of the ones that I've put in here, and uh, there should be a search box. I mean, let's just see. So, um, no, okay, wait. <laughs> um, so, there we go. so I made this little thing once uh, to do like a spinning globe, and you can see this one does what I'm wanting. It, it only shows, like for example, here I've got Africa, and it hides away the other other pieces. So I'm just coming here to see which coordinate reference system I used and I used one uh, I'm not exactly sure which one that is but um, uh, maybe I'll put in my notes let's see uh, okay I used the orthographic north coordinate reference system. So I'm just going to go back and tweak what I did to use that orthographic north coordinate reference system. So I'll make another Custom coordinate reference system, settings, uh, custom projections. I'm going to make a new one here called Tim Orthographic Africa, something like that. Um, I've got the well-known text from that, um, from that gist that I just pasted in there. And the main thing to change here is the line of latitude. Um, and we, we've got that in my clipboard here. So the line of latitude was 20, 21, 9, 6. So we put that like that. Uh, sorry, no, we want to change the longitude, not the latitude. Uh, we'll leave that as um, 
zero because this was pretty 0 0.19 good years. It's pretty much on the equator. And then the, the line of longitude, we're going to change that to be that. All right, and we're going to again validate that. Okay, we are missing. Uh, I chose the wrong option here. It needs to be proj. Validate. Okay, that's fine. So again, we can uh, save the project and we can test our coordinate reference system here on the map to see how it looks with Tim in here. So that's my new orthographic one. Okay, so that looks a bit better, right? Now we can see that the things that are on the back of the globe are being hidden away and the things that are on the front are being shown. So that's great. So I'll put that back to the Airstream one for the main map. Um, formal here. Alright, and then we go back to our map layer over here. And then for this map, we can go and choose our custom coordinate reference system. So, um, uh, Tim Orthographic Africa. Alright, we get a much nicer looking um, globe there. Um, we can slide that back in over here. Alright. Um, and then you put all your normal decorations onto the map, like your title and north arrows or whatever else you want to have. But you've got a nice way to kind of like portray where um, the scene is on the whole map. What's nice about this is if you zoom out, then you'll see, uh, let me actually zoom in, it's much better. You'll see that that little red area shows you like the part that you've zoomed into. So if we go to South Africa like this, zoom out a notch. Something like that. Um, and that's that's the process for doing an inset map with a, sort of a globe effect. And you can tweak that, that styling for the globe. The shadows play around with it to get, make it look more sphere-like if you want to. Um, you could even maybe color that in a bit blue or something. You could just try to do that quickly. Um, if, you, if you can't get to that thing easily, there is a panel that you can add here, which um, um, lists all the items. So you can just click on it here, now I've selected that item. So we could just go one last tweak here and just put the fill to be um, some nice oceanic blue looking colour. Something like that, yeah. Um, and we can do the same even with this one here, we could um, set the background um, to some fixed color like this. Uh, something like that. I'm not feeling too artistic today, but anyway, you get the idea. And uh, these, these things, you probably want to group them together as well so that we can then resize them as a group. So go to this one and this one and this one and then say group, um, group those items together and now they're like one group. Um, we use this little arrow over here and we can, <laughs> this thing I think is, uh, I need to move it to the back, let me just see, see. Um, to the back. I don't know why it won't let me select this thing. I think it's a bug in QGIS, but um, maybe I locked it. Oh, I did lock it. Hang on a second. <laughs> when I was trying to select it, I went and actually locked it. So locking means that you can't move that thing at all, which is not what I was trying to do. So those two things should be in a group now. No? Okay, wait. Um, I just select them both, put them in that group, uh, and now we should be able to resize them as a group. Uh, put that back on the map. I know, I just drag that over there. And that's it. Are there any questions from what I've shown you? Uh, I need to uh, repeat this. Yeah, and sure. <laughs> maybe after. <laughs> I've, I've recorded it, so when I'm saying that's it, I'm going to stop oh, the recording yeah. and we can carry on chatting afterwards. But um, 
uh, that's it for the process of creating an inset map. Um, uh, you, yeah, re repeating and practicing is a good way to like just um, entrench the knowledge. And I did delve into a few kind of more advanced things about like defining your own coordinate reference systems and so on. You, I mean, you can kind of avoid some of that stuff by using like some of the standard coordinate reference systems that already exist. Um, that might make the, the process I showed a bit simpler. Yeah, once I repeat uh, this, it will be after the meeting. I will maybe have some questions or issues. Okay. Yeah. Good. And any from Yasha and Seho, um, have you got any questions? Um, what I was actually struggling with was making the making the inset map the globe shape. So I I managed to change the projection system, mm -hmm. but I understand now. Okay. Okay, good. I've got no questions so far. Yeah. I just need to practice it. Okay, great. Then I'll see how it goes. Okay, so we'll end our screen recording there. We can um, uh, carry on chatting afterwards. Thank you, everybody who's maybe watching this. I hope you all learned something. And I always learn things when I do it. I always forget things that I've learned before and have to relearn them as well. So it's always fun to just delve into these little examples. Uh, thanks for watching.